Would you please go to the speaker's registration desk and they will accept your wish to take the floor later. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, I hereby declare open the 56th ordinary annual general meeting of the Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft and I chair this meeting. I should like to thank you very much that so many have accepted our invitation and have come to attend and I should like to extend a very cordial welcome to you. I should also like to welcome our guests, the ladies and gentlemen from the media and those who follow our meeting on the internet. I would like to point out to you that we also have additional space that we have made available in hall two, in case this uh, auditorium can accommodate all shareholders. Signposts or our security assistance will be happy to guide you into the adjacent hall two, where the vehicle exhibition is located. From there, you can follow the meeting via wide screens. However, you cannot participate in the general debate and not in the voting on the items of the agenda. To do so, you would have to come back to Hall 3. Ladies and gentlemen, the fiscal year 2015, particularly in the fourth quarter, was characterized by the diesel issue for Volkswagen. Now, this is also the reason why this annual general meeting takes place later compared to the previous year. We will inform you about the current status of the investigation and technical solutions in the course of this annual general meeting. Before, however, we will deal with the diesel issues and other topics of the AGM. Let me first of all give you some following formal remarks. The notarial minutes, as provided for by the stock corporation law, will also be taken this year by Dr. notary Dr. Haupt, who is at the center of the panel. In addition, the notary public Muller Ising is present. He is uh, seated here at the speaker's registration desk. The AGM has been convened in accordance with the rules of the Articles of Association. The convocation of the AGM was published on May 12. 2016, its postponement and the corresponding correction was published on the 30th of May 2016 and 31st of May 2016 in the Federal Gazette. The completion of the list of attending shareholders and shareholder representatives will still take some time. As soon as the attendance has been determined, I shall announce it to the Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, the list of attendants is continuously updated at the terminals, which you find at the entries towards Hall 3. You can take a look and, uh, at the list of attendants, at the electronic list of attendants. Should you want to leave uh, the AGM temporarily or prior to its conclusion, please uh, take account of the guidelines for the checkout and the re-entry procedures. The information for shareholders, which of course also apply to shareholder representatives, are available to you in the form of an information leaflet, which which has been handed out to you at the registration counter. For safety reasons, I should like to ask all participants of the AGM to take all their belongings with them, even if they leave the meeting only temporarily. And in particular, you should, in particular, you should also take your bags and briefcases with you. Ladies and gentlemen, via your custodian bank, you have received an admission ticket to the AGM, which you have handed in at the registration desk in exchange for a voting card block. Should, in case you have not as yet uh, uh, exchanged all these uh, admission tickets, please uh, do so in your own interest, because otherwise these shares will not participate in the voting procedures. Only the ordinary shareholders are entitled to vote in this meeting. I would also like to ask you to switch your mobile phones into the silent mode and not to make any phone calls here in the auditorium so that uh, our meeting will not be 
disrupted. As of the beginning of the debate, no photographs or videos may be shot. Please uh, behave in such a manner that the uh, vehicle exhibition area and the other attendance area in such a manner that uh, shareholders following the meeting will not be disturbed. As you can see from the signs at the entrance doors uh, to the uh, halls, there is a CTV, CCTV recording of the assembly, but recordings will only be made as needed. This measure is necessary for safety reasons. That much about the necessary formal remarks. I would now like to ask you to stand up in order to commemorate the deceased of the Volkswagen Group. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing up to honor the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, I note that all members of the Board of Management are present. Moreover, I can also find that all members of the Supervisory Board of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft are present. First of all, I would like to give you a summary report of the supervisory board and explain the changes in the composition of the boards of the uh, boards since the last AGM and also the recommendations of the German corporate government's court. After my presentation, the board of management will give its report and then we will have the general debate. After the debate, we shall proceed with the voting process. Ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of the report of the supervisory board, I would like to thank a quarter word of thanks to the members of the board of management and all uh, employees and staff members of Volkswagen Aktien Gesellschaft for the work done. This explicitly replies to the employees of all companies within the Volkswagen Group. They all work with passion and dedication on a daily basis to achieve the best for this company and its customers. We sincerely regret all the more that the whole diesel issue is casting a shadow across this great company. Nobody here could have imagined that this company could get into a situation which is like the one we're experiencing at the moment. I would like to apologize to you for disappointing your trust. We regret that deeply. And here I not only speak on behalf of the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board, but for the whole company. The furthermost task of this company is to regain trust in the Volkswagen Group. I will come back to this in greater detail. However, I would like to focus on the formal matters of the Supervisory Board report first. Ladies and gentlemen, since the end of last year's annual shareholder meeting, the Supervisory Board and the Board of Management have seen changes in their composition. The representatives of the Labour representatives of Volkswagen AG, here Jürgen Dorn, has resigned on the 30th, 30th of June 2015, with effect of the 1st of July 2015, Uwe Hück has been appointed as his successor by court. With effect on the 19th and 21st of November 2015, Bertolt Huber and Hartmut Meiner have resigned their offices on the 20th and 22nd of November 2015. Jörg Kaufmann and Johann Lav Javklo were appointed by court to be their successors. With effect of the 1st of June 2016, Babette Fröhlich assumed her office as a member of 
has resigned her office as a member of the supervisory board of the supervisory board. Birgitza, on the 1st of June 2016, was appointed by court to be her successor. The members of the supervisory board who have left the group, I would like to thank them on behalf of all members of the board, supervisory board for their good cooperation. The respective successors have uh, worked with us during the meetings that have taken place of the supervisory board in the meantime, we're looking forward to working with them. The um, representatives of the capital side and the supervisory board here, Julia kuhn piech resigned her mandate on the 1st of October 2015. On October 7, 2015, I was appointed by court as a member of the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG. Likewise, on the 7th of October 2015, the supervisory board elected me to be the chairman of the supervisory board. Our motion limits my term of office as a court-appointed supervisory board chairman to the period ending with the end of this AGM. The same applies to the term of office of Dr. Louise Kiesling, who just uh, before the last annual general meeting was appointed a member of the supervisory board as the notice periods had expired for the election um, during the last AGM. With the end of this year's annual general meeting, the composition of the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG will see the following changes. Mr. Akbar Agbaka has resigned his office on the supervisory board of Volkswagen Action AG. With the effect of the end of today's annual general meeting, I would like to thank Mr. Albaka, as I thank Ms. Julia Kunpiech, who had resigned her office with the effect of the 1st of October 2015 for their good and constructive cooperation on the supervisory board. With the end of this annual shareholder meeting, the term of office of Annika Falkengreen will end on a regular basis. As you've seen on the agenda, the supervisory board proposes to appoint Dr. Hesse Sultan Al Jaber for the rest of the term of office of Mr. Akbar al Baka, who is going to leave us with the end of this annual shareholder meeting, and Annika Falkenbein, Dr. Lise Kiesling, and me to appoint us, to elect us for a full term of office as members of the supervisory board. At this point, I would like to give Dr. Ajabra the opportunity to introduce herself. Dr. Kiesling already introduced herself to this annual shareholder meeting during last year's meeting. Dr. Ajava, may I ask you to address a few personal words to our shareholders and to introduce yourself to this annual general meeting. Dr. Ajabra, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Delighted to be here this morning, and thanks for the welcome. Let me begin by introducing myself. I am Hissa Al Jaber, Qatar's new representative to Volkswagen Supervisory Board, a proud mother of three young adults, two sons and uh, one son, two daughters, and engineer and computer scientist by profession, and the former ICT minister with deep passion for healthcare, education, digital technology, and entrepreneurship. I have led the structural reforms in the telecom and IT sectors in Qatar since 2005, and in 2013, I was appointed as the first ICT minister, which was a milestone particularly for working women in the Gulf region. During these 10 years, we, I, we managed to set solid foundation for a vibrant, and healthy ICT sector in Qatar. The sector market growth has doubled, and we established host of strategic communication enterprises in the field of satellite communication, fiber optics, IT service, and assistive technology. With a strong hybrid team of multinational and locals, we foster dynamic digital sector in Qatar, 
localizing capabilities, modernizing infrastructure, and the growing cluster of ICT industries to support our national agenda for diversifying the economy. When we saw a slow market in 2010, uh, we proposed the government to intervene and modernize the communication infrastructure by establishing Qatar National Broadband Network Company to roll out fiber optic nationwide and Qatar Satellite uh, Communication Company, which successfully launched Qatar's first ever satellite in 2013, and the second one is in the 2017. The outcome is a collective of achievements that have put our ultimate goal of harnessing the power of ICT for the wellness of, of people. However, in hindsight, the two achievements have marked my career and I am proud of overseeing the liberalization of Qatar telecommunication market and the, establish, the establishment of Qatar Assistive Technology, MEDA, which serves people with all kinds of disabil uh, disability. I'm privileged to continue serving on several governing boards, including Qatar University, Silatec, it's an Arab Youth Empowerment Organization, the American School of Doha, and Qatar Financial Market Authority. I also chair the board of key national enterprises at a critical juncture of their potential growth, Qatar Satellite Company, Ma'lumatiya, and Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. I have been working closely with hosts of young entrepreneurs and investing in selected startups to identify opportunities and how disruptive technology can enhance the viability of certain sector of the economy in, in our region, particularly in area of healthcare, education, and environment. And now let me share with you what I do know of Volkswagen. First, I'm very proud to be a member of this prestigious supervisory board, and I read a lot about Volkswagen in the past couple of months, and I noted the criticism in the media. But I don't think we should doubt Volkswagen's ability to change and evolve. Strategy 2025 aims to boost profit, push aggressively to a new technology, service, and prioritize very critical areas and productivity, cost structure, corporate structure, mobility service, and others. I believe that Volkswagen management is genuinely motivated to turn the company around and deliver on Volkswagen potential and promise. I am not an expert in automobile uh, in industry, but Volkswagen, a huge scale brand and skillful manpower are second to none. As a technology expert, I hope to bring insight to the table and add value when we consider emerging technology option. And for sure, I will be listening and learn about Volkswagen culture and industry. I, will, I wish Volkswagen management all the best in their effort to continue making the company among the leading car manufacturers. Thank you. Guten Morgen, meine Damen und Herren. Ich freue mich sehr, dass ich heute Morgen hier sein kann und danke Ihnen für den freundlichen Empfang. Ich möchte mich Ihnen kurz vorstellen. Ich heiße Hessa al jabr bin Katas neue Vertreterin im Aufsichtsrat der Volkswagen AG, ich bin stolze Mutter von drei jungen Erwachsenen, einem Sohn und zwei Töchtern und bin von, von Beruf Ingenieurin und Informatikerin, war zuvor Ministerin für Informations- und Kommunikationstechnologie und ich habe eine große Leidenschaft für das Gesundheitswesen, Bildung, digitale Technologien und das Unternehmertum. Ich habe die strukturellen Reformen in den Bereichen Telekommunikation und Informationstechnologie in Katar seit 2005 eingeleitet. Und im Jahre 2013 wurde ich als erste Ministerin für IKT, also Informations- und Kommunikationstechnologie, ein Meilenstein insbesondere für berufstätige Frauen in der Golfregion. Während dieser zehn Jahre konnten wir das tragfähige Fundament für eine lebhafte und gesunde IKT-Branche in Katar legen. Das Marktwachstum in der Branche hat sich verdoppelt und wir haben eine ganze Reihe von strategischen Kommunikationsunternehmen in den Bereichen Satellitenkommunikation, Glasfasertechnik, IT-Dienstleistungen und Unterstützungstechnologie aufgebaut. Mit einem starken, gemischt multinationalen und einheimischen Team förderten wir eine dynamische digitale Branche in Katar, in dem Fertigkeiten lokal aufgebaut wurden, 
Infrastruktur modernisiert wurde und ein Cluster von lokalen IKT-Unternehmen zur Unterstützung unserer nationalen Agenda zur Diversifizierung der Wirtschaft aufgebaut wurde. Als wir 2010 ein langsameres Marktwachstum beobachteten, schlugen wir der Regierung die Intervention und Modernisierung der Kommunikationsinfrastruktur durch den Aufbau, Aufbau der Qatar National Broadband Network Company, dem katarischen Unternehmen für Breitbandnetzwerke, vor, um landesweit Glasfasernetze einzuführen, sowie die Einrichtung der Qatar Satellite Communications Company, dem katarischen Unternehmen zur Satellitenkommunikation, welches 2013 Katars allerersten Satelliten erfolgreich in die Umlaufbahn brachte. Und der zweite steht Anfang 2017 an. Das Ergebnis hiervon ist eine Reihe von Errungenschaften, die unserem letztendlichen Ziel dienen, die Kraft der IKT für das Wohlergehen unseres Volkes zu nutzen. Im Nachhinein kann ich allerdings sagen, dass die zwei Errungenschaften, die mich mit Stolz erfüllen und prägend für meine Karriere waren, die Liberalisierung des katarischen Telekommunikationsmarktes und die Einrichtung des Qatar Assistive Technology Center, MADA, des katarischen Zentrums für Unterstützungstechnologien sind, wobei Letzteres Menschen mit allen Arten von Behinderungen unterstützt. Ich habe das Privileg, dass ich weiterhin in verschiedenen Verwaltungsräten bin, einschließlich dem der katarischen Universität Silatec, einer arabischen Jugendförderungsorganisation, der amerikanischen Schule in Doha und der Katar Finanzauf Finanzaufsichtsbehörde. Ebenso bin ich Vorsitzende der Gremien der wichtigsten nationalen Unternehmen an einem kritischen Punkt ihres potenziellen Wachstums, Qatar Satellite Company, Malomatia und der Carnegie Mellon Universität in Katar. Gleichzeitig habe ich eng mit einer Reihe von jungen Unternehmen gearbeitet und in ausgewählte Start-ups investiert, um Möglichkeiten aufzuzeigen, wie disruptive Technologien die Lebensfähigkeit bestimmter Wirtschaftszweige in unserer Region steigern können, insbesondere in den Bereichen Gesundheitswesen, Bildung und Umwelt. Und nun lassen Sie mich dazu kommen, was ich von Volkswagen weiß. Zunächst bin ich stolz darauf, ein Mitglied dieses renommierten Aufsichtsrates zu sein. Ich habe in den vergangenen Monaten viel über Volkswagen gelesen und die Kritik in den Medien gesehen. Aber wir sollten die Fähigkeit von Volkswagen zur Veränderung und zum Wandel nicht anzweifeln. Die Strategie 2025 zielt darauf ab, die Gewinne zu steigern und aggressiv in neue Technologiedienste vorzudringen, sowie Prioritäten in den kritischen Bereichen Produktivität, Kostenstruktur, Unternehmensstruktur, Mobilitätsdienste und anderen zu setzen. Ich bin der Überzeugung, dass der Vorstand von Volkswagen eine große Motivation hat, dieses Unternehmen zu verändern und dass Volkswagen Potenzial, das Potenzial hat, das Versprechen einzulösen. Ich bin keine Expertin aus der Automobilbranche, aber die Größe von Volkswagen, die Marke und die erfahrenen Experten stehen, den, stehen niemandem in irgendetwas nach. Da ich Technologieexpertin bin, hoffe ich, dass ich eine gewisse Erfahrung einbringen kann, während man sich in neu entstehende Technologien hineinbegibt. Und ich werde sicherlich aufmerksam zuhören, um mehr über die Volkswagen-Kultur und die Branche zu lernen. Ich wünsche dem Vorstand alles Gute bei den schwierigen, vor Ihnen liegenden Aufgaben. Herzlichen Dank. Ja, vielen Dank, Frau Dr. al Thank you very Meine much, Damen und Herren, Dr. Herren ich darf Ladies and Gentlemen, die personellen Veränderungen I will continue to focus on changes of the composition on the Board of Management of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft since the last annual shareholder meeting on the 5th of May 2015. The former chair of the Board of Management, Professor Dr. Martin Winterkorn, resigned his office as, chair, as CEO on the 25th of September 2015. On the 26th of September 2015, the supervisory board appointed Matthias Müller as CEO. Dr. Herbert Dies, on the 1st of July 2015, was appointed as the CEO of the Volkswagen brand as member of the Board of Managing Director. Christian Klingler, member of the Board for Sales and Marketing, resigned his office in agreement with the Supervisory Board on the 25th of September 2015. My successor as the CFO, the Supervisory Board appointed on the 7th of October 2015, Mr. Frank Witter. The mandate on the Board of Management of Professor Horst Neumann, responsible for human re um, HR and organization, ended with the end of his contract on the 30th of November 2015. His successor, 
the appointment of Dr. Karl-Heinz Blessing, who assumed his office on the 1st of January 2016. Likewise, on the 1st of January 2016, Dr. Christina Hohmann Dennert assumed the newly, cre resort, newly created resort of integrity and legal affairs. I would like to thank all those members of the Board of Management who have left us most warmly. I am confident that the new team of, the, of managing directors is the right one to assume to the great challenges, to address the great challenges that our company is confronted with successfully. I wish them every success at all junctures. So much on the changes of the composition of the supervisory board and the board of management since the last annual ordinary shareholder meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, the supervisory board during the past financial year on a regular basis and extensively looked into the situation and development of the Volkswagen Group. On this note, let me refer you to the extensive explanations in the report of the Supervisory Board from page 12 of our annual report. We have continually monitored and advised the Board of Directors in all management decisions of fundamental importance for the group. The Supervisory Board was uh, continually informed and directly, regularly, extensively, in writing and orally, and soon after the events on all relevant topics. In addition, we were continually informed by the Board of Management on current topics and compliance. Exceeding this, the Board of Managing Directors conveyed a monthly detailed report on the current business situation and the outlook for the financial year. Any deviations from operations were explained by the Board of Management, both in writing and orally. Causes for these deviations were intensively discussed and analyzed by both the um, Board of Management and the Supervisory Board, and remedial measures were discussed. In addition, the Board of Managing Directors reported during the meetings of the Special Committee on Diesel Engines on a regular basis on current developments in conjunction with the diesel issue. Together with Mr. Müller, I engaged in consultations outside the supervisory board meetings as well during regular meetings and discussions. Topics, among others, were the strategy, the planning, business development, the risk situation and risk management, and issues revolving around compliance of the Volkswagen Group. And from December 2015, the developments in the diesel and CO2 issues and topics. However, the supervisory not only had close and trustful discussions with the Board of Managing Directors, but also engaged in a dialogue with our stakeholders very intensively. For instance, during the past months, I had a considerable number of discussions with investors. During financial 2015, eight meetings of the supervisory board took place. With the exception of Mr. Albaka, all members of the Supervisory Board have taken part in more than half of the meetings of the Supervisory Board and its committees that they are part of. The average attendance ratio in the Supervisory Board plenary was 95 per cent. During the last financial year, four out of the five committees of the Supervisory Board have met. Those are the Executive Committee, 12 meetings, the Audit Committee, meeting six times, the Nomination Committee, meeting three times, and the newly founded, in October 2015, Special Committee on Diesel Engines, which had six meetings. Looking at the large numbers of meetings convened uh, in the Supervisory Board and its committees, you see how intensively the Supervisory Board is exerting its monitoring and uh, consultative functions. The Mediation Committee did not have to be convened. A detailed description of the topics discussion discussed during the meetings of the Supervisory Board and its committees are found on pages 12 through 17 of our annual report. An important mandate of the Supervisory Board is to specify the remuneration 
of the Board of Managing Directors. At this juncture, let me therefore describe the system behind the board remuneration where there will be no changes during financial 2015 with the exception of those which, as provided by the German uh, Corporate Governance Codex, I am reporting now. The negative special effects from the diesel issue have had their repercussions in the variable remuneration components. This applies to both the biannual basis uh, computed special bonus and the individual performance bonus, both based on the operating result and for the four-year long-term incentive. As an aggregate total, this resulted in a reduction of the variable remuneration component of approximately 30 percent. Because the remuneration parameters are multi-annual by nature, this effect will also have continue to have its effect in the next during the next years. Diverging from the calculation method decided by the supervisory board in 2013, the um, special bonus for the members of the Board of Managing Directors for Financial 2015 was changed as follows. To determine the special bonus for Financial 2015, the operating result, including the operating result in China for Financial Year 2015, was reduced to zero euros. Through this reduction, the bonus, which is calculated for the remuneration of the members of the Board of Di Managing Directors, was again reduced. The supervisory board has decided, in addition, to set the individual performance bonus for members of the board of managing directors to 40 percent. Exceeding this, the supervisory board of Volkswagen Aktien Gesellschaft, on its meeting of the 22nd of April 2016, has accepted the offer of the members of the board of managing directors for the active members of the management board at this point in time to defer the payment of 30 percent of the variable remuneration for financial 2015 for three years and to make it contingent on the share price. Ladies and gentlemen, I am aware that some of you find this contribution of the members of the uh, Board of Managing Directors is not enough. In evaluating the variable remuneration, please bear in mind that the special remuneration and the long-term incentive are based on multi-annual reference values. This corresponds to the stipulations of the German uh, Stock Corporation Act and the German Corporate Governance Codex. Due to the multi-year basis, the effects of the negative non-recurring effects from the diesel issue on the variable remuneration 2015 are not as high as some of you would have hoped. The negative special influence in 2015, however, because of the multi-annual reference basis, will continue to have their effect in the coming years and will reduce considerably the variable remuneration component. This takes into account the sustainability injunction according to the German Stock Corporation Act. Let me also stress that the members of the Board of Managing Directors, due to the deferred payment of 30 percent of the variable remuneration, contribute voluntarily to an adequate proportion. I may also call your attention to the fact that the described measures have significant consequences for the managing directors. The aggregate total of all measures for 2015 for a member of the Board of Management in office for the whole year will receive 57 percent less payments or remuneration. The company pension scheme was modified to be a contribution-oriented um, pension within the Volkswagen Pension Trust EV the, every year. 
the contribution guarantees a, a pension contribution of 50% of the basic remuneration for each calendar year into Volkswagen Pension Trust AV. On the basis of these contributions, there are the mo modules for a lifelong pension payment. With a view to the lifelong pension payment, capital payments can be paid as either one-off payment or in increments at the point of the starting of the pension at the earliest after completing the 63rd year. Um, in the pension payment was based on an individual percentage of the basic remuneration for the duration of belonging to the company by the changeover to the contribution-oriented pension. Now, those rules apply which apply to pay scale employees. The members of the uh, managing board of managing directors have received remuneration pursuant to the German uh, commercial code amounting to 63.2 million euros. The recommendations of the German gov corporate governance codex on board remunerations we comply with the following exceptions. The severance cap will is and is taken into account when new contracts are signed. After the third term of office, it is not taken into account if no cap was part of their contracts before that. Insofar, we ensure the protection of acquired rights. Exceeding this, both the Supervisory Board and the Board of Management decided on the second to 22nd of April 2016 to issue a complementary a statement to the Declaration of Conformity to the German Corporate Governance Codex concerning the exclusion of uh, later changes of the comparison parameters of variable remuneration, maintaining the performance targets for the comparison parameters in the opinion of the supervisory board would not have taken into account the current situation of the company adequately. Operating result, including the proportionate operating result in China, has been reduced to zero, as I've already mentioned, with the concomitant repercussions on the bonus payments. For the future board remuneration, the following applies. Together with the board, we work to realign and to give the group a new direction, independent of the current situation. We want to create the preconditions for Volkswagen to be able to sustainably develop successfully. Part of this is naturally that the board remuneration is reconsidered and reviewed. The same applies likewise for the remuneration of the members of the supervisory board. The supervisory board member remuneration comprises both fixed and variable components depending on the dividend paid. Because of the crisis, the supervisory board members who were in office until the end of financial 2015 for the past financial year did not receive any variable remuneration. The overall remuneration for all supervisory board members, therefore, during financial 2015 amounted to less than 700,000 euros. In financial 2014, more than 12 million euros had been paid. Although the majority of comparable companies is paying a fixed remuneration to its uh, supervisory board members only, we have not intentionally not proposed a change of the supervisory board member remuneration considering the current situation, but we will review the uh, remuneration of the supervisory board members in the future against benchmarks. On the 14th of May 2016, both the uh, Board of Management and the supervisory board have issued a complementary statement to the Declaration of Conformity. This addressed open questions in conjunction with the exhaust issue and the resulting uh, valuation and measurement questions. The um, deadlines for the disclosure for publication of the group financial statements of 2015 and the interim report for the first quarter 2016. The um, 
semi-annual financial report for 2016 will comprise the recommendation to publish the um, group financial statement within 19 days after the end of the financial year. So we comply with that again. Uh, on the 22nd of April, a complementary uh, declaration of uh, complementary statements was issued and explained in conjunction with the remuneration. On the website of the Volkswagen AG, you find the con declaration of conformity and its complementary statements. Details on the Corporate Governance Codex and the implementation of its recommendations are found in our Corporate Governance Report, which can be found uh, from page 60 of our management report. The presented report on the relations with affiliated companies was um, audited by our auditors, and the supervisory board has agreed with that report, has approved that report. I refer you to the written report of the supervisory board, which you find from page 12 of our annual report. Let me now give the floor to the deputy Chairman of the Supervisory Board, Jörg Hoffmann, who will give some explanations on my change from the Board of Management to the Supervisory Board. Mr. Hoffmann, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, dear shareholders, as Deputy Chair of the Supervisory Board, at this juncture, in the framework of the report of the Supervisory Board, I would like to comment on the change of Hans-Dieter Perch from the Board of Managing Directors to the Supervisory Board. With, I would like to give you the reasons for this in the statutory period of two years. Until the 20th of October 2015, the um, position of the Chairman of the Supervisory Board since the um, um, stopping of the office of Dr. Piech was vacant. The supervisory board chair of the greatest German uh, car maker needs to be an expert in car engineering. This applies both for the technical side and the financial uh, situation of our industry. Mr. Perch's qualification is ensured without doubt in both areas. He enjoys the trust of the shareholders of this company, which is a precondition for the successful assumption of the office of chairman of the supervisory board. And nobody can successfully fill this position who does not have the support of the employees of this company without reservation. The collaboration and partnership of the management board and the supervisory board and the uh, labor representatives of this company is something that Volkswagen is um, an example of. And Mr. Perch fulfills these requirements to the highest extent. There were, was no second candidate for this uh, office who is equally qualified. Therefore, the Volkswagen AG, on the basis of the Porsche Automobile Holding SE, proposes pursuant to Section 100, Subsection 2, Number 4 of the German Stock Corporation Act, proposes to you, dear shareholders, to elect Mr. Perch for the next five years as member of the Supervisory Board. The Supervisory Board intends to elect him as chair of the Supervisory Board afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, dear shareholders, I should like to thank Mr. Hoffmann and the colleagues of the Supervisory Board for the appreciative words, and I certainly appreciate this confidence and trust very much. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, I would like to start with the. I would like to finish the actual report of the supervisory board. At this point, you were quite justifiably so expect the report concerning the clarification activities on the diesel issues. It is a, a pleasure for me to comment on this and also to clarify a few points. 
And these days, Volkswagen is going through its biggest litmus test in its corporate history. With the diesel issue, we have disappointed the confidence and trust of our shareholders, our customers, our business partners, and of the public. The supervisory board, the board of management, and the employees have made endeavors from the very beginning to cope with this crisis in a joint effort. Only if we join forces will we be able to see to that Volkswagen will overcome this crisis and ultimately emerge from it strengthened. The prerequisite for this is that we will win back the trust and we will do all that is in our power to do that. We, the supervisor board and myself, are quite aware of the fact that we will only be able to make this if we were able to clarify all the accusations, accusations comprehensively, independently, and relentlessly in the clarification and the coping with the consequences of the diesel issues. We have already made major progress. We have not yet reached the objective. A lot remains to be done, but I'm sure that we are well underway. In view of our comprehensive clarification work, we can now comprehend the root cause of the diesel issue and the development of the engine control software. In hindsight, the strategic decision of a large-scale diesel campaign in 2005 was the starting in the USA was the, the United States was the departing point of departure of the diesel issue. Volkswagen wanted to have a high performance diesel power unit to be offered on the US market. In doing so, Volkswagen was confronted with the very strict emission limits in the US. This uh, of course meant particularly challenges for our engineers, which then ultimately led to the use of an inadmissible and impermissible engine control software. Our diesel vehicles were introduced into the market in the year 2008 in the United States. In 2014, the International Council on Clean Transportation, ICCT, identified conspicuities in the emission behavior of certain diesel vehicles. This uh, matter was not partic given particular attention by the management levels of Volkswagen was considered a technical problem which was not alarming or worrying. Technical problems belong to the day-to-day -day business of a big automotive manufacturer. Volkswagen had then repeated and reproduced the measurements of ICCT and the extraordinarily high NOx emissions were confirmed. The result was communicated to the U.S. agencies and in close consultation with the U.S. Um, authorities, Volkswagen had initiated a recall campaign for the recalibration of the affected diesel engines. Only gradually, did it become clear that the reason for the abnormal emission behavior could reside in a device which, in according to U.S. law, can be classified as a so-called defeat device. This is an engine control software which will modify the emission behavior of the vehicles as a function of the driving situation. Whenever the vehicle is in a test cycle, it emits less NOx with this engine control software other than in real operation. On September 3, 2015, Volkswagen has disclosed the mode of functioning of the engine control software vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. authorities. The board of Volkswagen assumed on the basis of assessment of a leading law firm in the U.S. that, as common practice in other cases in the U.S., a consensual solution would be possible for with the U.S. authorities, i.e. a solution which would not give rise to any severe economic consequences for Volkswagen. In contrast to this expectation, which was quite a surprise for both the boards of uh, Volkswagen, on September 2015, the U.S. American Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, informed in a notice of violation the public about the fact that in certain vehicles of Volkswagen irregularities were identified in NOx emissions.
The U.S. authorities and EPA in particular accused Volkswagen of the fact that in the four-cylinder diesel engines of the model years 2009 to 2015, a defeat device had been installed. Volkswagen acted immediately in this extraordinary situation. So what, have we, what did we do in particular? We have immediately admitted uh, the accusations publicly. Volkswagen has closely cooperated with the U.S. authorities involved and continues to do so. From the very beginning, without any reservation, we have, we have cooperated with all national and uh, international institutions in Germany. Volkswagen has filed a charge with the competent public prosecutor in Brunswick as early as in September 2015, and it cooperates closely with the authorities. The supervisory board has dealt with this topic as early as uh, on September 25 of the year 2015. A few days later, the supervisory board on the 7th of October 2015 has established a special committee on diesel engines consisting of six members, and this was given far-reaching competences. As mentioned above, this committee meets regularly and uh, is also informed concerning the progress made in the clarification and will also then uh, take the next necessary steps. Dr. Wolfgang Porsche is uh, the chair, is the head of this committee. He is uh, very familiar with our company and also can uh, give, uh, has, has the uh, independent view on this matter, which is necessary for such a function. I thank Dr. Porsche on behalf of of the supervisory board for his activities and for his commitment for Volkswagen. At the end of September 2015, Volkswagen mandated the internationally renowned lawyer's office, Jones Day, to conduct a comprehensive, independent investigation into the diesel issue under the auspices of the supervisory board. Jones Day has the mandate to look into the allegations as an external lawyer's office comprehensively and without considering any immunity of individuals to ensure that we need independence. And this is why Jones Day is a so-called independent investigator. In its investigations, Jones Day is entirely free. Neither the special committee nor the supervisory board or nor the board of managing directors is either willing or can influence the investigation and the um, looking into things by Jones Day. They report to the U.S. Department of Justice, the DOJ, above all. The scope of the investigation is determined by Jones Day in conjunction with the Department of Justice of the United States. This includes the procedure. The review is independent in every respect, consequently. This independent investigation is of such great significance for us because through it we comply with the requirements of the U.S. authorities. We want to transparently and thoroughly investigate into the allegations in operative manners, Jones Day is supported by Deloitte auditors. In addition to the external investigation through Jones Day, we, as quickly as possible and in close conjunction with the Board of Managing Directors, we've taken internal measures to um, resolve the uh, diesel issue internally and to find out all the facts. Immediately after the allegations became known, the Internal Audit Department, on behalf of the Board of Managers, Ching Directors, and the Supervisory Board, informed a task force. Their mandate is to look into relevant processes and the reporting and internal control systems in engine development. We want to find the weak points which could have occasioned the diesel issue and as uh, to find out possible problems as early on in the processes and to take remedial action as quickly as possible. The content and results of this investigation and the um, remedial measures occasioned is something which Mr. Muller will inform you in greater detail later. The appointment of Mr. Muller as a successor of Professor Dr. Winterkorn 
has seen somebody succeed, uh, Professor Entercon, in this office that um, knows the brands in great detail and is um, held in high esteem for his constructive perspective on things. His track record shows that he has strategic and entrepreneurial contacts. In Mr. Miller, we found a successful and assertive manager who, exceeding this, has uh, great social skills as well. With a view to the diesel issue, in addition, we, in close conjunction with the Board of Managing Directors, on the 1st of January 2016, have created a new responsibility on the Board of Managing Directors, integrity and legal affairs, meant to cluster responsibilities and illustrate the significance that ethical and compliant behavior has for Volkswagen. The former Federal Constitutional Court um, lawyer, Dr. Homan Dennard, was um, assumed this office, which carries great responsibility in this difficult situation. I would like to thank her on behalf of the Supervisory Board for assuming this office. Both the Supervisory Board and I personally have ensured Ms. Holland have assured Ms. Holman Dennard of our full support. Furthermore, we've mandated the renowned lawyer's office, Gleis Lutz, to support the supervisory board in conjunction with the diesel issue and to uh, give consultation on legal matters. The uh, investigation of Jones Bay is accompanied uh, from legal point of view and the necessary conclusions drawn. Gleis Lutz investigates on the basis of the relevant interim results of the reviews of uh, Jones Day, of the investigation of Jones Day whether members of the Board of Managing Directors in conjunction with the diesel issue are in breach of duty. The external investigation of Jones Day have progressed and are intensively driven forward. 550 interviews on the diesel issue have been conducted by Jones Day. Many more interviews are still outstanding. 72 million documents have been saved for a digital analysis, the so-called e-research. The systematic analysis of these documents has progressed to a large extent. The host of information and the complexity of the issue make this investigation one of the most extensive of German corporate history. In investigating the allegations, thoroughness clearly precedes speed. It is about investigating legal responsibility. The allegations have to be diligently examined. For this reason alone, I've already stated that during a press conference last December, and this continues to apply to the present day, the review by Jones Day, the investigation, has not been concluded for this reason. You will ask us what progress the investigation into the diesel issue has uh, made and what results we have on hand. As our shareholders, you have the right to ask for this information. This likewise applies to our customers and business partners and to the general public at large. We take this wish and this right very seriously. For this reason, on the 10th of December of last year, we presented the results of our internal audit investigation and we have given you an insight into
important it is to get back trust and to achieve transparency. And we want to investigate into all the details of the matter, therefore. And the investigation procedure needs to be transparent as a process as well. All the more I regret not being able to present the full interim results of the review and investigations. The reasons for this are in the development of the uh, process which Volkswagen um, is uh, engaged in, in the U.S. in conjunction with the diesel issue. The U.S. Department of Justice on the 4th of January 2016, on behalf of the EPA, has brought a complaint against Volkswagen and Audi and further companies of the Volkswagen Group. The claims are uh, justified by the allegation that the use of a defeat device uh, contravened against American law for um, clean air. Uh, I had hoped that we would be able to report on the conclusion of a comprehensive settlement in the United States. Unfortunately, this is not possible today. <clears throat> As Volkswagen on the 21st of April 2016, Volkswagen concluded a fundamental agreement with a view to um, um, settlement of um, claims under civil law with the authorities and the claimants in the US. And the uh, lawyer set us a period for the 21st of June 2016 to present a final settlement. This uh, period was extended to the 28th of June of this year. The negotiations on the court proceedings and the official proceedings in the US are therefore continually in a very sensitive state. The success of these negotiations uh, means a lot for our company. A lot depends on this and being confidential is instrumental for the success of these negotiations. At this present time, it would engender tremendous risks for Volkswagen. You as shareholders, to inform you as shareholders and the general public on the status of the negotiations. The position of Volkswagen in the ongoing negotiations would be weakened. In addition, we expect that Volkswagen, in the case of a comprehensive collaboration with the Department of Justice, may expect leniency uh, with a view to the penalties. Publishing interim results could jeopardize this leniency. This would have negative financial repercussions at a great extent. The mandated lawyers' offices have uh, therefore advised us urgently to not publish the preliminary results of the investigation. We cannot exclude that the ongoing investigation could be negatively impacted by the publication of the preliminary results. Particularly, witnesses which are interviewed could adjust their statements to the results of the interim report. We can and must prevent a publication impeding the investigation into the allegations. In the interest of Volkswagen, therefore, we cannot bear the responsibility to ignore the urgent recommendations of the U.S. Uh, lawyers' offices that have been mandated by Volkswagen. Let me reiterate, we regret this very much. This decision was very difficult to take for me personally as well. Last December, we announced to report in April of this year on the status of the investigation. For the same reasons as today in April, we had to forgo further publication of review results. At this juncture, I can only ask your forbearance. Jones Day is planning for the review to be concluded in the fourth quarter of 2016. Both the Supervisory Board and the Board of Management currently assume that the facts which are the object of the investigation are comprehensively published after a settlement with the U.S. American Department of Justice is reached. Such a settlement usually is concomitant with a detailed statement of facts of the Department of Justice, which is published with a settlement after the penal proceedings 
this is then published and information from the diesel issue and the results of the Jones Day investigation will be contained therein. Ladies and gentlemen, we have proposed to this annual shareholder meetings to approve, formally approve the acts of uh, the members of the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board. You know that I myself, until the end of last October, was member of the Board of Managing Directors of Volkswagen. My change to the Supervisory Board had been planned independent of the diesel issue. To prevent any conflicts of interest, I do not partake in uh, consultations on resolutions of the supervisory board that concern my actions in conjunction with the diesel issue. When taking resolutions of the supervisory board for financial 2015, I abstained from voting. The motion of the supervisory board is based on an extensive legal opinion of Gleis Lutz, lawyer's office. On the basis of this expert opinion, Professor Dr. Goethe, the former um, chair of the second civil court on the federal court of law, he and um, Professor Goethe come to the result that at the moment there are no uh, material and uh, severe breaches of duty of members of the Board of Management in office in 2015, which would speak against a formal approval of the acts of management. Both the uh, supervisory board, the supervisory board, on the basis of this expert opinion, decided on the 10th of May 2015 to propose to this annual shareholder meeting to approve of the acts of management. He did that under one provisio. The supervisory board clearly stated that it would continually review this proposal and, when necessary, would amend these proposals. Yesterday, Gleislutz and Professor Goethe have uh, issued a updated uh, expert opinion, and this has the following result. Even taking into account the uh, press statement of the public prosecutor of Brunswick from this Monday, the current uh, state of knowledge does not establish any clear and material breaches of duty of members of the Board of Managing Directors, which would speak against a formal approval of the acts of management. Against this background, we have reconsidered our proposals for resolutions of this annual shareholder meeting. The uh, board, which in conjunction with the, our proposal, um, for the formal approval of the acts of management has been advised by CMS Hashes Siegler. Lawyer's office has intensively looked into the current information again. Yesterday, both bodies, the, on their meetings on the 21st of June 2016, resolved to um, continue proposing to this annual general meeting um, to formally approve the acts of management. The supervisory board has not taken this decision lightly. In intensive discussion, its discussions, it has weighed the merits of the criteria for the uh, proposal, and it uh, has followed the interests uh, and the benefit of this company. Against this backdrop, we believe that a formal approval of the acts of management is particularly important as it sets a signal for trust into the future. The supervisory board remains confident that managing the current challenges is in good hands with those members of the board of management in office today. We want to strengthen their back and ensure that Volkswagen remains able to act in these difficult times. It is impossible when investigating the allegations and managing the difficult situation in which we are that we stand together. You as our shareholders, I'd like to ask you for this reason, also in the interest of Volkswagen, to give your trust to Volkswagen and to approve the acts of management. At this juncture, I would like to stress that with the approval of the acts of management, you do not waive any indemnity claims against members of the Board of Managing Directors. The Supervisory Board, independent of today's decision on approving the acts of management, continues to investigate whether any indemnity claims can be brought against a former or uh, currently acting members of the Board of Managing Directors. Without considering individuals, it is only guided by the interest of the Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft. AG. Ladies and gentlemen, Volkswagen 
does not condone any non-compliance against rules or laws. No business justifies a contravention and a breach of ethical or legal stipulations or rules. The allegations which are on the table are in contravention of anything for which Volkswagen stands. I promise you today that we will uh, investigate into these allegations as transparently as possible and present the results. I stand for that, and the whole supervisory board of Volkswagen AG stands for that. I stated last October after being elected to as chair of the supervisory board, and I'd like to reiterate today to I will do everything in my ability to fully resolve these allegations and investigations, and I will make my contribution to re-establish trust in the Volkswagen Group to make it grow again so that Volkswagen can look to a successful future. But make me at this juncture to thank the Board of Managing Directors for the trustful cooperation. The Supervisory Board accompanies the work of the Board of Managing Directors closely, and the cooperation is very close and trustful, particularly during this current crisis. This is very important. Mutual trust is essential to find solutions in the interest of Volkswagen AG and to implement these solutions. Let me assure you that for a successful future of Volkswagen, we have drawn the necessary conclusions. To this effect, and the new strategy 2015 of the Volkswagen Group, Mr. Müller will give you more detail now. Thank you for your attention up to here. I would now like to ask Mr. Müller to present the Board of the Managing Directors. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, welcome to Hanover, to your company, Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft. This is a debut for me, too. This is my first AGM as chairman of the board of management of our company. This is a job that I assumed last September with great respect and also with confidence. With respect, because our company is going through the most severe test ever in its history, and with confidence, because on the basis of more than 30 years at Volkswagen, I know what potential and what possibilities there are in this group, in its brands, and in our workforce. Volkswagen is a great company. Despite everything that has happened, been said, and been written in the past few months, making a contribution to ensuring that this group and its people have a good future is a motivation and an incentive to me. On the basis of discussions, letters, and emails, I know that for many of you, Volkswagen means much more than just any investment. Many shareholders feel a deep attachment to this group and its people because our products have accompanied them through their lives and will continue to do so. And because Volkswagen has always been more than just a big corporation. Therefore, it is all the more painful to you, to us, and to me personally that as a result of the software manipulation in diesel engines, rules were broken and ethical boundaries transgressed. This misconduct is contradictory to everything Volkswagen stands for. It has damaged our greatest asset, the trust that people have in our company and in our products. On behalf of the Volkswagen Group and everyone working for the group, I would like to ask you, our shareholders, to for, for your apology, our apology for disappointing your trust in Volkswagen. We cannot undo the past. 
What is in our own hands is to handle this in a responsible way. And in concrete terms, this means finding good solutions for our customers, systematically investigating how this could happen, and looking forward, learning from mistakes made in the past and doing the right thing for the future. We are facing up to this task. Everyone that bears responsibility for Volkswagen, the supervisory board, the board of management, management in general, and workforce representatives, all the way on to and including the workers on the production line. They are all united in our effort to regain trust that has been lost. And this is what is important to us and to me personally, including here and now, today. Understandably, the diesel issue has overshadowed many things in the past few months. However, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for me to tell you, to ensure that you know that Volkswagen is more than just this crisis. Our group has qualities that were not lost overnight, qualities that we can build on for the future too. Strong brands and great vehicles, a high level of engineering expertise and innovativeness, our global presence, many millions of customers the world over who are loyal to us, and above all, a workforce consisting of 610,000 people around the world that do their utmost for our customers. I would like to say that I have great respect for the performance, the loyalty and the dedication of our employees more, now more than ever. And I would like to say that I and we are very thankful to them for this. Ladies and gentlemen, last October I presented a five-point plan to help Volkswagen emerge from the current situation and realign it for the future. This is about effective technical solutions for our customers and the systematic investigation of what happened. But it's also about new structures, a new mindset that we intend to establish in the entire company. And it's about a strategic reorientation for this huge global group. Even though your patience and our own patience has been put to the test, I can say that in all five of these points, we have made substantial progress in the past few months. This also applies to the techno technical solutions for the diesel vehicles involved. Solving the problems for the benefit of our customers remains the most important task. And for this, we've worked together with the German KBA, the German Motor Vehicle Authority, to develop a detailed plan for the necessary measures in Germany and subsequently in all of Europe and mobilize the necessary resources. The retrofitting campaign began in January in Germany, and now we have received approval for more than 3.7 million vehicles. This includes the Volkswagen Passat, Tiguan, Caddy, initial versions and variants of the Golf, the Seat Exeo, the Skoda Superb, as well as different Audi models such as the A4 and the Q5. We expect the recall campaign to pick up speed very quickly in the second half of the year, and our customers can count on us doing our utmost to carry out the recall campaign as quickly professionally as possible and to satisfy all our customers. And we'd like to thank all of you for your patience in this content context and to thank our customers. With the agreement in principle data that we made on the 21st of April in the United States, we made a major step forward in order to solve the diesel issue and the 
litigation involved and to provide to customers technical solutions. In the United States, in the past few weeks, we've been working intensively on the details. At the request of the settlement master, Robert S. Mueller, the court that has jurisdiction in, jurisdiction in this case granted the parties an additional week up until the 28th of June to submit the relevant documents. We would like to also thank our American customers and the people we are working with over there for their patient while the final agreements are being drawn up as quickly as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, despite all progress, I can say that there is still a long way to go before we will have completely taken care of all aspects of the diesel issue. We are dedicating ourselves to this task with meticulousness, with earnestness and resolution. And this means that we will not rest until we know everything about how this could have happened, and above all, before we have taken the, drawn the necessary conclusions for the future. There's an external investigation that Volkswagen commissioned, and Mr. Pitch already told you about the status of that investigation. And these efforts are supported by the Board of Management with no reservations. The the second pillar of the investigation is the investigation done on by, being done by internal auditing, which we, the Supervisory Board and Board of Management, commissioned immediately after this misconduct became known. And this extensive work was completed in the middle of December last year. Essential results were presented to the public back then at a press conference. The Internal Audit Division, as I said, did an investigation and they focused on three points. First of all, processes. Secondly, our reporting and control system. And third, infrastructure. According to everything we know today, in the past, there was not just personal misconduct on the part of some individuals. There were also shortcomings in certain technical areas. This applies, for instance, to the test and approval processes for engine control units or control modules. The internal audit department pointed out these weaknesses and proposed remedial measures to improve processes. The focus here is on structuring processes more clearly and making them more systematic. For instance, the processes and structures for approval of software for engine control modules are being realigned, and competencies and responsibilities are going to be sharper and binding. This includes the staggered approval processes, an extended four eyes principle, a clear separation of functions between development, approval, and quality assurance, as well as escalation processes in the event of problem. And in our reporting and control systems, too, there was room for improvement, such as, for instance, increasing or an improved detailing of responsibilities. We reacted immediately by revising rules of procedure for different bodies, for instance, for the change control boards, as they're called. In addition to that, internal auditing pointed out that our internal IT infrastructure is in need of adjustment in some places. In the future, in the relevant areas, we will be using electronically assisted processing and control systems that can be integrated perfectly into our working processes. Several million euros have been requested in IT, and their approval has has already been initiated by the Board of Management. Tracking processes, identifying faults and mistakes, and determining who is responsible for what. This is just part of the task. The other part, looking to the future, it's more important, is to draw the right conclusions and lessons from this. For instance, we decided that in our group, emissions tests, emissions tests in the future will be checked externally and independently. In addition to that, there will be sample real driving tests about emissions on the road. I'm convinced that we as an industry require more transparency and the courage to be honest. And therefore, we emphatically support relevant initiatives by lawmakers in this area. 
Drawing the right conclusions and right lessons also means that 31 of the packages of measures identified by internal auditing are being implemented. And for some of them, they, this has already been done completely. And other parts of the Group 2 are currently checking their processes using a handbook that has been derived from the findings of the internal auditing department. It's a handbook with what we call golden rules. And on many project groups, we have representatives of several brands working on redesigning and optimizing our processes to make them more robust. The findings of internal auditing were also handed over completely to Jones Day. And in this way, they are helping to clarify who's responsible for what. Now, with regard to responsible or responsibility, I could say that so far we have determined that 10 people pi might have been part of a manipulation and they have been released from their management duties and some of them have even left the company altogether. What's important to me here is to state that in a country governed by the rule of law, people are innocent until, until proven guilty. Now, looking at the progress made in the investigation, I could say we will determine and decide later on whether or not any additional legal measures are required, and if so, which ones. Ladies and gentlemen, our experience in the last few months has urgently demonstrated to us that sustainable success is only possible if integrity that is acting legally and acting on the basis of values, if and only if this is the basis of our daily activities and decisions. And this is knowledge that we must anchor even more systematically in the entire company and above all, we must always walk the talk. Appointing Christine Homa Denhardt to the Board of Management was was a first important step in this direction. Her experience will help us to strengthen our compliance management and to involve our employees everywhere in all these activities. In addition to that, we, the Board of Management, will, on a quarterly basis, be receiving comprehensive risk reports that will complement the event-related risk tracking. And this means that it'll be able to, we'll be able to more quickly control for risks in a more targeted fashion. We're also continuing to develop our whistleblower system internally. We want to strengthen our employees to ensure that they can blow the whistle on misconduct and illegal activities without fearing any personal consequences. We want to foster a culture of open and constructive criticism making it not just possible, but also desired. Volkswagen's success is based on technological progress, the top-notch quality of our products, and sustainable activities. It is not worth any business in the entire world to violate any laws. We will not tolerate any violation of laws in order to even better ensure that we can apply, adhere to all rules and regulations in the future. We are working intensively on improving our processes and structures. Under the leadership of Christine Hohmann Denhardt and myself, we have triggered a number of measures on the basis of which incidents such as the diesel issue will be able to be ruled out to the greatest possible extent in the future. This includes, in particular, measures for improving product compliance in the development and production process, as well as in quality assurance. In addition to that, processes in technical development will be designed to ensure that even an attempt to circumvent legal requirements will be recognized earlier and prevented. No system in the world can guarantee that we can completely prevent any individual misconduct. But by make, carrying out these improvements, we can ensure that our systems and our structures are designed in the best possible way in order to recognize misconduct such as this in the future. Our objective and my objective is this. In terms of compliance, Volkswagen should become a role model for a model or for a modern, transparent and successful company. And we are taking to heart that not everything that is legally correct is necessarily correct. Ladies and gentlemen, 
When you go from one success to the next, the urge to call one's own activities into question often declines, and this applies to companies too, in particular if they are very big and are active in a traditional industry such as ours. And as we unfortunately have had to take note of, this also applies to Volkswagen. A shock such as the diesel issue can also have a curative effect. In this way, at Volkswagen, the crisis has opened doors. It has strengthened us in our efforts to accelerate necessary changes that are very urgently required and to reestablish priorities. So taking advantage of the crisis like this is something that was my objective from the word go. Some components of the change process are a new structure and a new management model for this group. Now, this was overdue regardless of the diesel issue because not only is our company itself bigger and more complex, the environment too in which we are doing our business activities has also been altered fundamentally, but more about this later on. Now, to believe that you can manage a global group such as ours just from our town in Lower Saxony is an illusion. Basically, it's about achieving the right balance between more independence on the one hand and leveraging the synergies of our unique group of brands on the other hand. A basic principle for the new Volkswagen, therefore, is that we intend to strengthen entrepreneurial responsibility and independence in our brands and in our regions. In addition to that, we must be able to decide more quickly and more courageously. We will give our managers more responsibility. Structures and processes will be designed so that they make our company more agile. And this also means that we will be dealing less with ourselves and more with our customers and the competition. And we'll have to do so. In order to do this, we'll be eliminating some reports that people don't read and eliminating some bodies that do not provide any additional value. In the new Volkswagen management model, the group board of management will also play a different role, a new role. Our job and my job is not to deal with all the details of product design. This is something the brands do. We, the Volkswagen Group Board of Management, will instead be focusing on the major issues for the future that we're facing, leveraging synergies, establishing the strategic guidelines for the future. And all of this will help to contribute to ensuring that this big group will be managed safely and in a sustainable fashion, even though the circumstances and conditions change. But structures and processes are only one thing. Without the necessary attitude, without the necessary mentality, this change this transformation that we are striving for will not succeed. So to put it in clear words, Volkswagen has a good corporate culture, a mature corporate culture. I'm thinking here, for instance, of our very deeply anchored quality awareness, the identification of our employees with our products, or also the high level of social responsibility that Volkswagen has always stood for. But our management structure, our management culture must improve. Openness, courageousness to make innovations and express people's own opinions and a real willingness to cooperate. These are all part of this. Constructively handling and dealing with mistakes, curiosity and entrepreneurial thinking. Obviously, that's part of it too. And last but not least, a sound system of values as a compass for our daily work. It's good to see how this new mindset is gradually coming to bear. More and more people in our company are seeing and taking advantage of the opportunities 
that this change, this transition is offering. And I'm convinced that if we, management, do the right thing and walk the talk, then this will also become a reality everywhere in the company. And it's also important here to make small signals. For instance, we used to have special signs for board of management members next to certain elevators, lifts. This has been eliminated, and our own Airbus is also about to be sold. But symbols alone are not enough. And for that reason, we've established a process for opinion shaping that goes across all brands and regions and all employees. And in the future, this will establish how we work together in the group. What's important here is to say that we're not replacing the identities and the ideas and particular areas of our own brands. Rather, this is our strength, but it's more about an overarching common roof for collaboration in the spirit of partnership for everyone that belongs to this group. Ladies and gentlemen, Volkswagen truly benefits from the work between all of the parts of the group. And this is proved not least by a look at the development of business and the results that we achieved, particularly at the end of the extremely challenging year 2015. The numbers for 2015 demonstrate that the current crisis is a major burden on us, but they also demonstrate that our operating activities, our operating business is intact. The Volkswagen Group is on a sound footing also in financial terms. In the 2015 fiscal year, we once again delivered some 10 million vehicles to customers around the world. Now, although volume, in my opinion, is not an end in itself, this figure underscores the fact that in many countries and in many segments, we do have the right products for our customers. Group revenue was up once again, both in the automotive division with our 12 brands and, in particular, in the financial services division. We were able to increase here substantially. So, more than ever before, it is paying off that our, that our business is on more than one very strong pillar. And this is also reflected in our operating earnings prior to special effects. The number here was at the very high level of the previous year. One of the strengths of the group is China, our biggest and most important market. And this was also the case in 2015. In China, we once again sold more than 3.5 million vehicles. Our joint ventures are very profitable, and therefore our prorated operating earnings were 5.2 billion euros. That's at the high level of the previous year. And it's covered or it's shown in our financial earnings. On the other hand, though, our numbers have been clearly hit by the diesel issue. The negative special items here resulting from that total 16.2 billion euros. This includes all expenditures and charges that were known and could be valued at the point in time when we close the books for the fiscal year. In particular, provisioning for upcoming technical and customer-related measures, as well as global legal risks. Our provisioning for the diesel issue was reevaluated at the end of the first quarter of 2016, and mainly due to currency-related adjustments of our provisioning, we have reduced these by 0.5 billion euros. Ladies and gentlemen, the special items that we posted in the financial statements for last year were no, door, no doubt a major hit. And this is impacting us in times when we actually have to invest all of our resources into the future. And as a result, in 2015, we've seen a negative operating result and the biggest loss in the history of the group. Now, the special charges are very painful, but the good news is that the Volkswagen Group is robust enough in order to handle these. We have a very strong substance in 
2015 alone, net liquidity of the automotive division went up by nearly 40% to 24.5 billion euros. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, that Volkswagen is very strong in financial terms. And without the special items, we once again would have been able to say we have had a very successful year. Against that backdrop, the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board are proposing to the AGM today that despite the negative group earnings number, we should pay a dividend. It should be 0.11 euros per ordinary share and 0.17 euros per preferred share. Now, we do know that if you compare it to our goals and your goals, it's not enough. And for many of you, it's a great disappointment. Our stated objective is and remains to allow you to participate in the success of the company, you are shareholders. The dividend ratio over the long term should be some 30% of net earnings, and we still adhere to this principle and we're working on it. The ongoing fiscal year, that is fiscal 2016, is going to be just as demanding in this regard as the past one was. But the beginning of the year is encouraging. In the first quarter, the group was working in a very demanding market and competitive environment, and we generated respectable results. Deliveries to customers were 2.5 million vehicles, which was 0.8% above the figure for the previous year. Group revenue was 51 billion euros and was thus down by 3.4%. And this was due, amongst other things, to negative currency effects. Our operating earnings were up slightly to 3.4 billion euros. And this was due solely to the positive special effects or special items uh, worth 0.3 billion euros, which were mostly the currency-related adaptation which were the provisions for diesel issue and the currency adjustments that I mentioned. On that basis, we are looking to the future with confidence, but also with a sense of realism as required. We expect that deliveries to customers in 2016 as a whole will be on a level with the previous year. So once again, we expect about 10 million units here. Group revenue from today's point of view will be, low, will be below the figure of the previous year. As a result of the economic conditions, in particular in South America and Russia, the exchange rate development, and in view of the diesel issue, this could be as much as 5%. For our operating earnings in the group for 2016 as a whole, we expect an operating margin of 5 to 6%. One thing is clear, in 2016, too, we have to have a very close eye on our costs. We have efficiency programs that have been kicked off, and they are being driven forward very urgently in the entire group. And in terms of investments in property, plant, and equipment, it is necessary to be disciplined in establishing the necessary priorities. But one thing here is, without a doubt for us, even in these difficult times, we will continue to assume our responsibility for employees. And this distinguishes Volkswagen from some other companies. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will remain the case in the future, too. Admittedly, this forecast is not faster, higher, farther, the way you're familiar with it from Volkswagen. And I have to say very clearly here that I am not worried by this at all. Our most important currency, our most important asset is, credi is credibility and the trust in our brands and our products and in Volkswagen as a whole. And regaining this trust, this is what it's all about. Everything else is secondary for the time being. And this, of course, does not mean that we are no longer ambitious. On the contrary, we are not going to make things easy for the competition. For this, 
there will be some 60 new products that will be launching this year, or some of them we've already launched, and they will make a contribution to this. This includes vehicles such as the new Volkswagen Tiguan, the Audi Q2, and the Seat Ateca, which have been very well received in the market, and we believe that they are going to be very promising for our future. Ladies and gentlemen, for Volkswagen, 2016 will be a year of transition. But it will also be the year in which we will accelerate the change that has been initiated. A year in which we set the course for the future of the group, in which we lay the foundation for a new and better Volkswagen. This leads me to the perhaps most important question. How are we going to shape the future of Volkswagen in a world of fundamental and increasingly fast-paced change? A world in which the parameters for our industry are changing in a lasting fashion. The automotive industry is now facing the next major leap forward in innovation. In connection with electric mobility and autonomous driving, digitization is going to dramatically change our business more dramatically than many of us are aware of now. Not only the automobile will change dramatically in the years to come. Mobility per se as an independent product, as our promise to people, will be and is being redefined right now. And incidentally, it is not being redefined first and foremost by us. It is being done so by our customers. So for Volkswagen, I can say that we are prepared for this change, this revolutionary change that is going on right now is our ally. It is not our opponent. It offers us great opportunities, and we want to seize these opportunities for profitable growth. With our program for the future that we call Together Strategy 2025, which we presented last Thursday, we will be establishing the requirements for this. Our new group strategy paves the way and clears the way for the change of one of the most one of the best car makers in the world to make it one of the world's leading suppliers of sustainable mobility this is the vision that we have that is guiding us and this is what it's all about to me and to us and in this context i can say that despite all the weaknesses that we see and are now urgently addressing volkswagen has numerous strengths i pointed this out when I began, our strategy 2018 was also a success, despite the justified criticism of a certain fixation on the size and the company, and also despite a certain hint at self-satisfaction that we did see over the course of the years. But it is a fact that in 2007, we set some targets and we achieved them ahead of schedule, or at least we were on track to do so before we were hit by the diesel issue. This applies to customer satisfaction and satisfaction of employees and the number of cars delivery to customers and to a certain extent in terms of profitability too. Now, if we're wording new targets, that doesn't mean we have to jettison everything we've done to date. Rather, it's about systematic evolution of our strategy, which has different focal points that are entirely visible. Our objective here is quite clear. Our commitment is this. We have enriched the lives of many people around, millions of people around the world with our vehicles, and Volkswagen also wants to have a major impact on shaping automobility for future generations too. Now, I admit that this is no doubt a lofty goal. How we want to achieve this is what we're answering with our Together Strategy 2025. The timeline of 2025 that we've mentioned here is part of the name, and it represents long-term thinking and long-term actions that have always been typical of Volkswagen. The term together 
that is also in the name of the strategy stands for a mindset and an attitude which will be even more important for this group in the future. We know that over the long term, we can only be successful if we join forces and work hard together, joining forces with our employees, working together with them and with and for our customers, with our shareholders and our business partners, and in full awareness of our responsibility for society and the environment. Together is therefore the quintessence of our understanding of sustainability, which will in the future determine our activities in the broadest sense of the term. Now, this term, sustainable, might seem hackneyed to many people or even arbitrary, but this does not change anything about how relevant it is. Sustainability, if you understand and practice it correctly, is the key to long-term economic success, in particular for a group that has the name Volkswagen, the people's car. Ladies and gentlemen, our new strategy does not mean keep on doing what we did before. No. With this new strategy, we've sounded the starting, sounded the starting gun for the biggest change process in the history of Volkswagen. With Together Strategy 2025, we have worded a clear vision for the next decade. Volkswagen will be a global leader in supplying sustainable mobility. This vision describes the transfer of our management commitment from the old world to the mobility world of tomorrow. And we will do our utmost to ensure that it does, in fact, become a reality. On this path, we've also established for ourselves a new mission a new mission that has to be the yardstick for our daily activities. We thrill our customers with tailor-made mobility solutions. We fulfill the numerous requirements of our customers with a portfolio of strong brands. We assume responsibility on a daily basis for the environment, for safety, and for society, and we walk the talk, and we act with integrity and build on reliability, quality, and passion as the foundations for our work. To word this in such a clear fashion is highly important for us right now, and I personally can pledge that we will live up to this mission. Then and only then will we be able to achieve our strategic objectives. Only then will we truly earn the loyalty of our customers and thrill them over the long term with our products. Only then will we be an excellent, that means reliable, safe, secure, modern, and open employer, and only then can Volkswagen once again be a role model as a good corporate citizen that makes a contribution to the whole, uh, to all of society, to the good of society and a sound environment, and only then will we be able to generate competitive earnings and be an attractive investment for you, our stockholders, and at the same time be a good employer for our employees. Ladies and gentlemen, we must achieve all of this if we want to achieve our overarching, our key goal, that is growing sustainably for our stakeholders and together with you. So today, what we're presenting to you here is just the framework for the details that have to now be established. So to put it differently, we've been working on the what and defining where we want to go. And what it's about now is to successfully implement these things, that is the how. For this, we have defined four major fields of activity that our Together Strategy 2025 is based on. First of all, we will be transforming our core business, which means we are going to be 
changing things fundamentally. Developing, producing and selling cars will remain essential for Volkswagen in the future. But the face of this business will change fundamentally. Secondly, we are establishing a new unit for solutions and services that concern mobility of the future across all brands, and it will be independent too. And this will ensure that we can develop this new additional growth driver with the necessary agility and with an entrepreneurial focus. And third, we are going to strengthen Volkswagen's innovativeness in the existing technologies, and in particular in new technologies. And for this, we're going to be mobilizing internal forces as well as accepting stimulus from outside the company. And fourth, we are going to be securing the financing for these huge investments that, for the future that we're facing. And for this, we're going to be using all the levers available to us. These four elements are a whole. The transformation of our core business and our new business units for mobility solutions are the foundation for the growth of tomorrow. But these two things can only be successful if we establish a true culture of innovation in our group and if we are sufficiently profitable to finance all of this. So what have we planned to achieve in concrete terms. The four areas of activity in our strategy have had allocated to them 15 central group initiatives. These are, if you wish, the heart of our strategy. It would go be beyond the time allotted to me to explain to you in detail all of these 15 initiatives. So therefore, I would like to just restrict myself to a couple of examples which I believe clearly convey how we at Volkswagen think and act about the future. Our strategy 2025 will also include an electrification initiative which is unprecedented in our industry. The internal combustion engine will remain important and it will accompany us for many years to come and in 2030 alone, in 2030, in the year 2030, about two thirds of the market volume for new vehicles will be vehicles with internal combustion engines. But that means that the other third will be electric vehicles. So the breakthrough for electric mobility will by then be ha, have become a reality. And we're determined to make electric mobility a new trademark at Volkswagen. By 2025, the Volkswagen Group will be launching more than 30 new fully electric vehicles, and we expect that by then we will be selling two to three million pure electric vehicles by then per year. That would will account for 25 percent of our overall revenue, which is a substantial share. And therefore, we are driving forward with our commitment here and are going to initiate an investment program worth billions. Now, it's important for me to say that even that we're, despite all this, we're going to be staying on the ball in evolving the fuel cell and we'll be ready for it when the time is ripe. In addition to that, we're working intensively on improving the environmental compatibility of our diesel and gasoline or petrol engines. A milestone on this path is something I'd like to announce now. The new TSI and TFSI engines of the group will be equipped step by step with particle particulate filters for gasoline engines and the first of these will be the 1.4 liter TSI engine in the new Volkswagen Tiguan and the Audi a4, A5, starting in June 2017. And by doing this, we're going to be reducing particulate emissions by up to 90%. By 2020, up to 7 million group vehicles per year could be equipped with this new technology.
And autonomous driving, too, is a key issue for the transformation of our core business. Now, I admit, I am someone who really loves having the steering wheel in my own hands, and therefore I initially was skeptical. But now, I and we do not have the slightest doubt that this revolutionary technology will become a reality in the next few years. And our commitment is to cover all relevant systems with autonomous vehicle concepts for private transportation and for what are called last mile solutions for the transportation of people and goods in major cities. We are working hard on these subjects. Fully autonomous vehicles with a system we develop ourselves will be launched at the end of the decade, at the turn of the decade. Cumulate, accumulated investments for new autonomous mobility solutions will amount to several billion euros. We're going to establish the necessary expertise in the company. We're planning a number of things, including hiring 1,000 additional software engineers, and I'm certain that we are really going to pick up the pace of development here when we do that. Now, this is also the case for another initiative of ours that is establishing battery technology as a core expertise area for the Volkswagen Group. Battery technology is the key to electric mobility. Their, its share of value added for pure electric uh, battery electric vehicles is 20 to 30 percent. For equipment, or rather for equipping our own electric Electric fleet alone, we between now and 2025 will require a battery capacity of something like 150 gigawatt hours. And this, of course, would also represent a huge procurement volume. The economic significance of this subject is quite obvious. And it would no doubt be good for the Volkswagen Group to have this technological expertise. We are going to be fundamentally checking all our strategic options so that battery technology can be established as a new area of expertise for the Volkswagen Group. And in doing this, we are focusing on the entire process chain, from the raw material all the way on through to battery assembly. Another strength of of our group, which is often underestimated, is the production of outstanding components. Under our roof, we have one of the world's biggest automotive suppliers. Our components division currently employs some 67,000 people at 26 different sites on five different continents that belong to various different brands. We've decided that we would strategically realign these activities in the group and cluster them. Now, as a result of this realignment, we want this business to be given more entrepreneurial freedom and leeway. We hope that this will help us achieve more transparency and more internal competition. And not least, we hope to have major contributions from them for areas that are important for the future, such as electric mobility, which I already mentioned. If you know Volkswagen, then you know that the realignment of the components division is a major step for our company, as is the transformation of our core business as a whole. In these activities, we're going to be acting in a responsible and cooperative fashion. This belongs to Volkswagen. This is part of Volkswagen. We owe this to our workforce, which is right now doing such great things. Ladies and gentlemen, the second cornerstone of our strategy 2025 is the establishment of our new business unit for mobility services. This new cross-brand unit will be headquartered in Berlin, that is, in, at a sufficient distance from Wolfsburg, from Ingolstadt, and from Stuttgart. And this, too, indicates that we take this word freedom and leeway very seriously. Our objective here is this. The Volkswagen Group wants to seize the opportunities in this market for the future. We already took the first step by taking a holding in GET. Our strategic partnership with a company 
company that today already has more than 50 million customers in a fast-growing market for the use of driving services is the nucleus for the expansion of this business. And we will be offering additional services in the future very quickly around this core, such as robo-taxis, car sharing, or transport on demand. Between now and 2025, we hope that in this fast-growing market with tough competition, we will be able to achieve revenue in the at the billion euro level, billions of euros. And I think this explains quite clearly what we are planning to do, establishing a second strong pillar for our business in the future. Allow me to make one comment here. The initiatives that I've mentioned here are all about passenger cars mostly. But that does not mean that we do not want to evolve our commercial vehicles business with the same ambitious ambition. On the contrary, Andreas Rentschler and his team have already worded the strategic objective of establishing a global champion. Volkswagen truck and bus, therefore, is, is intended to become a multi-brand supplier across the cycle and become the most profitable company in the industry. Here, it will also be about moving away from being just a pure manufacturer of commercial vehicles to becoming a leading supplier of intelligent transport solutions. So it will be very similar here to what we're planning to do in our passenger car business. Ladies and gentlemen, I talked here quite a bit about new potential revenues and earnings, but we will only be able to achieve this if we are capable of affording the necessary investments. The profitability of the Volkswagen Group is high, but it is not sufficient to finance everything. So therefore, we've got to generate some additional funds, and this is best if we enhance our efficiency even more. In basically all divisions in the group, there is a lot of room for this. And therefore, we have stated as our targets the following. We want to substantially increase the efficiency of our investments. The CapEx rate in the automotive division will be reduced to 6.0 percent between now and 2025, cautiously, but substantially. The efficiency of our expenditures in research and development will also be substantially improved, which means that we will be spending our money in a more focused and aware fashion. The R&D ratio will be reduced to 6.0 percent, which is appropriate appropriate view of the competition. And we also want to ensure that our general administration and cost of sales are reduced. Over the long term, we want to reduce this ratio to 12% less than 12 percent. All in all, in the years to come, we're going to be making major increases in efficiency. On the basis of our figures for 2015, we can say that we'll have annual earnings increase potential worth billions. To put this simply, that means in the years to come, we're going to be losing some of the excess weight we've put on and putting on and we'll be putting on additional muscle now for this we're going to be looking at all of our brands and divisions across the entire value chain in view of the significance of the Volkswagen brand this brand will of course play a key role the pact for the future that the Brand Board of Management and the Works Council have been working on since June is since early June has the key for this. Ladies and gentlemen, with our strategy 2025, we are not remaining vague. Rather, we are linking it to very clear binding targets. Volume or revenue targets are not being established because size is not an end in itself. Rather, it will happen automatically if we are successful. And since we think there are good opportunities for this, we believe that there will be a significant, but also, above all, profitable growth that we can achieve. Operating return on sales between now and 2025 will be increasing step by step to 7 to 8%. The return on capital 
in the automotive division will be more than 15 percent by then. That's our target. We believe that for a company with our structure in the future market and environment, uh, competitive environment, we believe that these targets are ambitious, appropriate, and at the same time realistic. We are going to be focusing on achieving lasting value for you, our shareholders, too. And nevertheless, despite the expensive transformation of our group, we still focus on sound financial policies. Ladies and gentlemen, last fall I said repeatedly that we will not be handicapped by this crisis. Now, this might have been something that you thought became hackneyed, but I hope that now at the very latest I've been able to come or overcome everyone's doubts. The Volkswagen Group is strong and very lively and vigorous. We are rising to the challenges of our time and are re aligning now more focused, more efficient, more innovative, closer to customers, more sustainable, and more systematically focused on profitable growth. Together, Strategy 2025 is the framework for this, and it also sets the guidelines. What I've presented to you here today is the starting gun for the further detailing of this, as I said. Now, we have no illusions about this because we know that the actual work has just begun. In the months to come, the corresponding strategies for the group brands and regions and functional units will be developed so that we breathe life into the framework established by Strategy 2025. The entire program broken down to brand and functional units with concrete measures and numbers. This is something that we will be presenting to you by the end of the year the entire thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Volkswagen Group right now is no doubt in a challenging situation. We are in the midst of handling all of the aspects of the diesel issue, and we have major burdens to carry as a result of this. But I'm convinced that we will emerge from this situation stronger than ever before, because in operational terms, we are very well positioned. We know where we're coming from and where we want to go. And because with Strategy 2025, we are doing what is right to achieve this and necessary to achieve this. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, at the end of my first speech at the AGM, I would actually like to request your trust. But for us, what's important, more important than ever before, trust is not something that is just granted. Trust has to be earned, and we are working on this very seriously and with total dedication. And therefore, I would like to request, above all, one thing of you this year. Please continue to remain loyal to the Volkswagen Group, to your group, and continue to accompany us on our path into the future. You will not regret it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Müller. Ladies and gentlemen, it is at this point that I would like to say goodbye to those of you who have listened to 